welcome back. Hi. This is Asif. That's Nura. This is the Norzai's episode three. Oh my god. That's a trip. It's a trilogy. <laughs> you said that last time, didn't you? No, I said episode two. For but yeah, you made a we Star Wars. Two. You made a Star Wars reference. You don't remember? Trilogy has nothing to do with Star Wars necessarily. Anything can be a trilogy. Oh. Okay, well. Anything that's three is a trilogy. Whatever. <laughs> that's the You're going to make people think I'm obsessed with Star Wars or something. That's what it seemed like. But trilogy has nothing to do with Star Wars specifically. Okay, well, to me, it did. I thought Star Wars was just trilogy and trilogy was Star Wars. No, anything that's three is a trilogy. Drink of the day is mango nectar, half mango nectar, half water, purified water. Sprinkle a little tahin. Oh, it's not even uh, it fizzy? Up. No, sir. Oh. So it's just watered down mango nectar. Sippy, sippy with a little tahin because then it's not super sweet. You get it? Yeah. Because that, that organic mango nectar is just not sweet. Anyways, welcome, guys. Um, We've got a lot of topics that we kind of listed out today. We're just going to, you know, wing it like always. Um, thank you so much for watching and tuning into the podcast as of late. I'm very proud of our turnout. I think it's huge. It's been good. It's been, it's been very um, fulfilling. Fulfilling? Is you feel fulfilled? Word? I feel very fulfilled. I feel like we're doing something good here. I feel like it's a good start. I feel like it's a good tell start. Tell your friends. Yeah, oh, please, yes. If you tell like it, friends. if you enjoy it, just Subscribe, give it a share. Like that shit. Please like it. Yeah, last week we had a very big mishap. Somehow the unedited... Somehow the initial one before I made all the cuts and sinks is the one that we uploaded. So, I think you just didn't make the cuts like you thought you did. I think I made the cuts and then I forgot to delete the parts that I cut it and they were still so they were cut but they were still in there. Oh. I think that's what happened. Sir Austin fucked up. Yeah. So, anyways, since uh the last episode. Oh yeah. How is how's it been you? Talked about on the last episode that you're pregnant. Mm -hmm. That was your first. Was that the first place you announced it was on the podcast? It was. So shout outs to the Norzai's um, um, Shishars and what what else? What are we calling them? What are we gonna call you guys? Listeners. Comment down below. What are what are groupies are gonna be called? <laughs> but I gave y'all first first dibs. Okay. Right. And so then was it yesterday that you posted on Instagram about it? Yes, sir. Uh huh. And what was I going to ask you about? Can we that? just talk about how y'all are obsessed with babies? I've never gotten 15,000 likes on anything my whole Instagram career. Is it a career? My whole Instagram life. What is up with the obsession with babies? Y'all, it's really endearing though. I must say, I felt the love. So shout outs to you guys. Thank you for all the sweet messages and comments. Also, if you comment on our YouTube videos for the podcast, we appreciate you even if you disagree with everything we're saying. I think it's, I love the comment section. It's crucial. Right, Austin? <laughs> it's a love-hate relationship, let's be honest. <laughs> You're triggered, I feel like. So why are you saying you love it? I think it's, in, in, I think it's crucial. I wouldn't... Crucial to get triggered? No, I think it's crucial to have that. That's why I'm, I'm not crazy about Spotify. I think Spotify... I wish Spotify had like a comment section. Exactly. If it, it if, needs it. I think it's going to come when Joe Rogan... Mm, it's going to have to with their video side That's of things. That's what I'm things. saying. There's going to have to be comments on the video. That would be crazy if there's no comments. Yeah. Anyways. But maybe there could be no comments. We're rambling about a lot of stupid-ish... How does it feel that you haven't told anyone that I'm pregnant? Yeah. No, I didn't tell anyone. <laughs> Except for family. You barely do that either. Yeah. But I'm not sure. I mean, 
I was l- letting you make the announcement. Oh, I didn't realize. Hmm. Anyways, um, yesterday. Yesterday with the 4th of July. 4th of July, the fireworks in Colorado were absolutely insane. Apparently, it's everywhere. Like, no, everyone no, no. that I've seen talking about it. Really? Yeah. Like, everywhere, people have been shooting off crazy fireworks. Uh-huh. I think, like, all the sh- fireworks shows got canceled. So that people are like, let's just sell it to regular people. <laughs> no, what I think happened is y'all are spending y'all stimulus checks on fireworks and fireworks only. Something's going on. What they're happened? Everywhere. Did you? What are fireworks? How much are fireworks? I feel like they're those kind of like the professional ones that shoot up and explode. Those ones are expensive. I feel like I was sitting right here. We were getting ready to film the podcast. Podcast, okay, not the podcast. The podcast. And out the window, I watched an entire show. I don't yeah. have to go any. I'm gonna have to go downtown. That shit was right out my window. Yeah, it was everywhere. And in Colorado, you have to drive to Wyoming. Yeah, they don't sell those are illegal in Colorado. So no one has them in Colorado. You have to go to Wyoming or have some kind of connect. So I don't know where everyone got them from. So Colorado bought Wyoming yesterday. Apparently. Shout outs to us. <laughs> but I did not have a connect. <laughs> and I just... didn't hear of anyone that I know that has a connect. So it's I don't understand. They were sold out, Asif. They've been going off every day for the last month. For real. So, but last night was really insane. Yeah. Anyways. Anyways, Kanye's running for president. <laughs> yes. Or so he says. <laughs> I don't believe he will. Do I don't believe, no, it's like when yeah. he announces that he's going to release an album next week and then it doesn't uh, come out. If it either doesn't ever come out or it does at least doesn't come out on time. You know what I mean? So. I feel like it's the same thing. He's either not going to feel that same way by the time it's election time or it's going to be pushed back to 2024. Also, just going to put it out there. But if he is running, I'm voting for him. <laughs> okay. You know, it's funny. I said as if this really happens, it will be crazy because I said as a you joke did a, when, like years ago, like after right after the last election. So 2016 or something. I said the only t- the only way I'm ever voting for president again is if it's Kanye or Elon Musk. Oh. And now apparently both of them are friends and Kanye's actually running. So Kanye And if Kanye runs, I assume since they're friends, like Elon's going to be involved in some Elon degree. Musk for vice president? Anyone? That Anyone? would be crazy. That's what I think should happen. I don't think it will happen. Why? He's got he's too busy flying into space and shit. Yeah, he's too busy trying to get us to Mars. Lame. Lame. That is not lame. That's the coolest thing ever. No, I think space is lame. How could you think space is the coolest thing ever? How much did that co- rocket cost okay. to launch into space? Exactly. What could we have done with all that money to make the world a better place? Earth. But, but Earth. this is this is my the point globe. though. Like, what if? Okay, so you know about like when Russia and U.S. were competing to get who could get to the moon first. So it was called the space race. So what if we do that again? Was that before and, they didn't walk on the moon or after? That was like what got them to walk. That's none of my business. Yeah. So anyways, though, there was this whole thing about like, you know, who could get there first. And there was all this competition going on. And that's basically instead of fighting a war, they were competing about going to the moon. So what if we could do that again, create a new international space race where instead of all the nations fighting each other and trying to blow each other up and using economic sanctions and all of the bullshit... Let's just all compete about colonizing space. Like, let's see. Oh, we could get to our this planet and put our flag on that before you guys. That just sounds like a waste of and money can, to me. Inst- but all the money, I'm saying, all the money that we spend on war and stuff, mm. we could spend on going to space instead. Or we could just not spend it on war or space and, like, make the world a better place. I think that's too good Simplified. to be true. It's too good to be true. Awesome. We got to compete somehow. We got to show our dominance somehow. I don't believe in and all And if we that. show our dominance on going to new planets first, that's way more productive than killing other people. Y'all should have seen Asif nerd the fuck out when... On the SpaceX launch? <laughs> yes. It was so cool. I was dying. I felt like such a high school bully watching him like, what a loser. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, oh my God, this is so cool. That's some historic shit. 
That's the first time ever that a private company has done something but, like that. But have they? Like, where's the proof? <laughs> We have, we just talked about something Nothing happened. that apparently we have to edit out because literally you can't YouTube's talk about it. trash. Whatever. That's something there. Are... Can I even say that YouTube's trash? Probably yeah, it, not. Yeah, you can, but you just can't say what you said before. Oh, that's so stupid. Whatever. So, are, are you going to vote for Kanye if he runs? I'm voting for Kim. I believe that Kanye's the puppet and Kim's going to be Kanye's not a puppet. I think he's just I think Kanye is a puppet. That plenty of Kim times. Kardashian's going to um, but change she will, the way, you know, what she is it will called? definitely have an influence, but I don't think you, anyone can really say Kanye's a puppet. Like, Here's the thing if, she, if he clearly always does what he thinks, not anyone else. Also, I'm saying this with I'm not into politics at all, so I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about half the time. Um, but I think what she's doing with um, criminal with justice, criminal reform, justice reform. I'm very passionate about stuff like that. I'm really into stuff like that. Like that's always been a dream of mine is to like, you know, build an empire and like employ people fresh out of jail that, you know, and pay them really good wages. So I'm, I'm obsessed with that. And she seems to be doing kind of just that. Mm-hmm. Um, so as a first lady, if she's, I'm convinced that if she becomes first lady, she's going to be doing all that and just like change the entire system. But maybe that's just wishful, wishful thinking. And well, that seems to be things. something she's uh, passionate about. So obviously, it would have some kind of effect. But with that in mind, that's why worth, I would vote for her. It's worth voting for Kanye just to hear the album he would drop as president. <laughs> I don't. I told Asif he's not dropping he's an definitely, album. He's, he's going to be busy. so manic if he wins the election that he's going to create an entirely new album like within 24 hours of being elected. Like his inaugural speech is going to be a live performance of his album. He's going to be too busy trying to come out with a universal dress code with Gap and running the country. <laughs> That's how we get to, like, uh, what is that? Hunger Games? Yeah. Like, isn't that what his clothes look like? How can he do both? Kanye, you can't do both. I think he could do it can all. Can you do both? And then raise little Sainty. Oh, my God. Every time I see little Saint West, I think of our... Is that the youngest one? No, it's the, it's their own... No, it's their boy. It's the second... It's the second. Well, there's second. a bunch of kids, right? Don't they yeah, have, like, four? five? Oh, four. Psalm, Saint... Northy in Chicago. It's a little cute. Yeah. So yeah. Um. Every time I see little Saint West, I just picture my little son. I'm like, oh, give him a little boy. Yeah. I really like his name. Saint. Yeah. It's a good name. And whenever Kim talks about him, she's always like, he's like the sweetest. Yeah. He literally grew into his name. Yeah. So cute. Okay, moving on. Um, what do you want to talk about next? Do you want to talk about, is the internet toxic? Sure, why not? Let's dive into it. Okay, so I was thinking the other day. Yeah. Because like we've talked about before, um, not on the podcast, but we could get into that on the podcast of just, you know, the general idea of like how social media impacts people negatively, mm-hmm. you know, increases depression and anxiety and FOMO and all that stuff. Right. But I was thinking just in general, what if the internet is something that's toxic to humanity and all the positives that it gives us as far as being able to communicate and learn and uh, pass information and have access to information. What if all of that is outweighed by a toxic effect that it has on our psyches and our emotions and our psychology. I mean, what I... if the trade is not worth it? What if it's something we fundamentally cannot handle and be healthy emotionally? Hmm. Well, I think I get both sides. Because um, when I was listening to this uh, GV podcast. What's GV? Gary V. Oh. I didn't know if you get mad when I like... <laughs> Give too much promo even with our 4,000 followers or whatever. Okay, but that's not that's a dude. That's not a company or something. Anyways, I was listening to Gary Vee talk about this kind of, and I don't really exactly remember what he said. But along the lines of, you know, everybody's just got all these insecurities and they would have they have them either way and social media just brings that out in people. So, like, stop blaming social media. And, like, so I kind of get that too. 
Yeah, but I think but I- if social media is bringing that out, then obviously it's playing a factor. Yeah, well, so he, it's not he doesn't to say like it's in... blameless or something. It's playing. It has an effect on people. Yeah, he doesn't believe in blaming like the platforms. Well, I do Cause... if if we can display that it has a net negative effect on people. Hmm. But what do you think? From the viewpoint of, like, being a creator over, like, a long period of time and having lots of followers and how does how do you think... I don't know. Like, I think your perspective is different, maybe, than mm-hmm. a lot of people who are just more on the follower side. Like, how has being a creator affected you emotionally and mentally? Well, that's a really big question because I see it from different angles. I see it from being like a a Muslim quote unquote like role model type shit. Mm-hmm. And I think that's not for me. It doesn't work that way. What do I you don't. Mean? I mean, like that's a lot of pressure, and I understand that pressure, and I don't like it. Uh huh. But I understand that like it's inevitable. You know, uh, so I, I see a big responsibility with having a large following. Mm-hmm. Um, I also, what was, I feel like, you but said do you something? feel like, th- I feel like that is just because maybe you're taking yourself too seriously. Maybe. Yeah. Like anyone who ha- feels like that's a huge responsibility and they are automatically some kind of role model. Mm-hmm. I think it's taking it too seriously and taking yourself too seriously. Yeah. And maybe that's, was that, mm, I, I would say, yeah. Like, I don't think that responsibility is as real or necessary as Mm -hmm. it was in your head. Well, I think it was a few years ago when I was like, you know. The only one doing it? Or one of the only ones doing it? Or like the first hijabi cover girl type shit. Yeah. Does that make sense? But I mean, why does, because you're the first hijabi cover girl mean, mean you're automatically like this perfect role model good girl? I don't know. I don't uh, because, think those are related necessarily. Because of the amount of press that that got, I felt like it needed, I needed to be a certain way and I needed to represent Muslims a certain way because that was, I mean, the way that that blew up, mm. you can't deny that, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. that needed to be as positive as possible for Muslim, for people that aren't Muslim seeing that for the first time. Right. Uh, we are about to... Is it cut off at 20 or 30? 29 something. Oh. Okay, so I'll have to edit this out. Okay, but so that... Um, you said something. That reminds me of something that I've talked to you about, like my theory of uh, one of the major causes of depression. Yeah, so that's so what we are talking about. My theory is... I believe that truth is the ultimate goal Mm -hmm. and the most important value or whatever you want to call it. That's what we need to strive towards. That's what we need to base things upon. And that's what we need to seek Mm -hmm. is truth above all else. And that doesn't always feel great. You know, like uh, Musashi Miyamoto was like, (laughs) or Miyamoto Musashi, however you want to, he was like the greatest like Japanese swordsman like in the samurai age but he said that the truth is not what you want it to be it is what it is and you must bend to it or live a lie mhm facts and that's what it is a lot of times seeking the truth makes you uncomfortable mm-hmm. it puts you in a bad position it puts you in a position where you have to double back or change things or sacrifice something And that doesn't feel good and it's not comfortable. Mm -hmm. But you can either choose that or you can choose to live a lie. Right? So I can relate to that. Yeah. So the question is what happens when you choose to live a lie? Well, I I feel like you've seen it firsthand. Right. That's my whole point. Society puts up these expectations or our family puts up these expectations or a certain situation like you were in puts you in a position of certain expectations and then people tend to sacrifice their, who they truly are mm-hmm. for the sake of those expectations. Mm-hmm. And I think 
sacrificing that truth at the core of yourself is a recipe for depression. Mm -hmm. There's that is the consequence of that. When you are not honest about who you are or what you are, when you're not honest about uh, expressing yourself honestly and truthfully, the necessary consequence of that is going to be depression because it's yourself's way of telling you, yo, you're fucking up. You're on the wrong track. You need to readjust. This isn't right. This isn't the right path for you. This isn't what you're supposed to be doing. You're living a lie. Mm -hmm. Living a lie is not supposed to feel good. It's supposed to get you fucked up Mm -hmm. because that will persuade you into living the truth. Mm -hmm. And that's the most important thing is living the truth. So I think that's what happens with a lot of social media people Yes, is that they get forced into that and they can't be honest. And that's one of also, aside from just the pressures of being a role model on social media, that's one of the big dangers of this whole cancel culture type of thing. Right. Is that you, you're no longer free to just express who you are. You're no longer free to have an opinion that isn't the orthodox, you know, opinion of what is uh, in societally or culturally right now. If you do, there will be consequences. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll get canceled. You'll get called a racist, whatever. Why do you just have to be racist? Well, whatever. Whatever the objection is. But the the scary thing is that that whole environment, uh, it pushes people to censor themselves. So people don't even have to get censored to stop or change what they say. They just see the environment of like, oh, if I do say this, if I am honest and truthful, I might encounter something negative. So I'm not even going to say that. And so you censor yourself. It's not even you getting censored. You're censoring yourself out of that, f- the fear of that uh, environment. Mm-hmm. But anyways, specifically with you, how do you feel like that contributed to how you felt with uh, social media stuff? Like, do you feel like you had to sack? Like, that's what you're saying, I guess, basically, right? Like, you were sacrificing who you actually were for who you felt like you needed to be? Yeah. I've felt that way for a very long time because of just of how, like, the the culture we were raised in. The You know, just like the... I feel like as growing up Muslim in America does that to you before social media. So then going out on like, social... Like, because the... Uh, culture is judgmental and so you have to like worry about being judged by people is that what you mean yeah yeah but social media specifically because i've always been the wild child especially of my family of you know Mm -hmm. i like my first youtube video ever was uh, people probably don't know this but i wore like a wig what yeah i didn't know that you remember that really long like blonde brown wig no and then whatever like it was up for a while but that was before like popped off and then I took it down and then my second YouTube video ever I think was like a foundation routine and I was wearing like short sleeves because I was like at home filming I still didn't know what that meant like putting it out in the internet right but I've always worn short sleeves with like hijab (laughs) even (laughs) though that's not proper hijab just that's what I've always done you know yeah and I've always I've always not practiced perfectly you know but i i if you watch my videos you probably don't go that far back and so as far back as you go most people they just see like the era of where we went to the mosque all the time where asif was super religious i was never super religious but people have this vision this view of me you know just because i covered more yeah, I think people expect anyone that's like in the media and visibly Muslim to be super religious. Yeah, but I was ne- I've never been ever. And the thing is I think most people are not. Like most people are not super religious. And I also, I mean it's huge that I, I mean I also hid my YouTube channel from my parents for a while. Remember? Mhm. Like they discovered it somehow. And that's a big reason why I felt like I couldn't be myself either because I always got in trouble for, I always got in trouble for shit that I either said online or did because they watch my stuff. Mm -hmm. But I'm a grown ass woman now, so you can't. Yeah, at some point you got (laughs) to not be afraid of getting in trouble. Yeah, and Asif, Asif, God bless you. I just got there. 
I literally just got Not there. Not only did you just get there, but you've helped me get there. You're welcome. Shout outs to Austin. But no, I think that's what growing up is. That's what actually becoming a real adult is. And until you get to that point, you're not there yet. You're still a kid. It doesn't matter how old you are. If you haven't got to that point where you live by your own rules and what your own conceptions of right and wrong are instead of, oh, I don't want to get in in trouble with my parents or I'm going to do something because my parents said that's what's good or not do it because they said that's what's bad. You haven't grown up yet yet. You you know, you're just, you're still a kid. And a lot, I mean, I really struggle with the fact that people think I'm acting brand new right now. What do you mean? Like, people think, oh, now she's taking off her hijab, you know? Like, no, I just showed you a one-sided version of my life. Um, and it went through an edited lens because, I mean, you can call that being fake or whatever, you know? Well, that's kind of what you said the problem was this whole time, right? Is that it basically was fake because it was... It was fake. Putting on a good face for everything. Yeah. And with good intentions. Side. Right. But, I mean, my I'm not acting brand new. Like, this is, this is just how I've always been. And now you're I'm just, just deciding to share this part. You're just you. being more comfortable with... Uh, yeah allowing that side of you that's always been there to actually be out there instead of feel like you need to um, follow the expectations. Yep. I think that's good. I think that's um, a very positive thing mm -hmm. and shows a lot of growth. Well, shout outs to you. Because I feel like it wouldn't well, have been, to you. been possible you're without you. You did it and you're... Uh, you encouraging it though. Ahead of schedule, I think. Yeah, but I think it took you to encourage that. And to show me that. I'm so glad that you saying that is on camera right now. Asif! I'm never letting you forget that. Anytime <laughs> we have a fight, I'm going to have a recording of this audio clip. Asif is such a hoe sometimes. <laughs> because. <laughs> That's the best insult. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> I like that your mom's and your a hoe mom's more. your mom's a hoe, yeah. But. I don't want. <laughs> but it's funny, when to, Aisha, especially to tell a dude. When you're someone a hoe. like when Aisha told me your mom's a hoe, my mom got really offended. <laughs> so yeah, I'm sure. I, I feel like your mom would get offended too if I said your mom's yeah, a hoe, but I don't really mean that. Fair. But it's funny. Yeah, it is funny. And I tell Layla your mom's a hoe all the time. Yeah. So whatever. And we all so, laugh. Okay, so that's my question. Now that you feel like you're being more authentic. And you don't feel like you have to, like, pretend to be a good role model. Ah! Uh, how has, like, has, have these new videos that we put up as podcasts felt different yeah. than the videos you put up before? Yeah, like, I don't even want to touch my YouTube, my other YouTube channel. I mean, I need to go and break the ice there, too. Well, I just don't know how to do that yet. We need to just uh, put clips of this show over there. Yeah, but I also want to start... Well, I mean, I think the stuff that I would get into on my other channel is probably more deeper and more... Not more deeper, but like a different level than what you and I talk about. How so? Just like you personally? Yeah. Without me? You probably. getting into stuff? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that seems like it would work. Mm -hmm. So, um, what... What do you? Th what is your answer to my question about the if, if we discover that the internet is actually toxic for us, would we give it up? I don't no? think we would. I think we're in too deep. I like, think I like think people have. It's the equivalent of like the to like in the sixties or whenever it was when they like legit found out like cigarettes give you cancer. Oh. Like oh, we thought it was a good thing this whole time, but actually it's killing you. Mm. Does everyone continue to smoke or yeah. does or does it cut it off? I feel like every I mean everybody goes through their phases. I think they cut it off for a little bit and then they come back and they cut it off and then they come back, you know? Yeah, people yeah, I've never <laughs> I don't remember ever seeing anyone that's like, "Yo, I'm out." and then like legit like just disappeared. Like everyone always comes back. Yeah, they always come back. There's something very addictive about it. Well, I think I mean like, remember how we were talking about the last podcast, like the social socializing thing, how that has kind of gone away? 
Yeah. And we've like replaced it with social, social media. Because that's your social life. Maybe. Yeah. Or you just want to be in the know. It's like, it's like asking a question that you don't want to hear the answer to, but you still ask it because like there's that curiosity there. So I think everybody's got curiosity with Instagram. And everyone's like, like, oh, you know what? It's so interesting. My 10 year high school reunion was supposed to be this year. Did it get canceled because of Corona? Yeah, it got canceled because of Corona. But for like everybody was like, so is it happening? And like it was literally crickets for a while. And like 2009, the class of 2009, I noticed like everyone's like, so is there going to be a high school reunion? And my mom, I mean, growing up, my mom used to always go to her high school reunions. So like that was always a huge thing before social media right Mm -hmm. but now that like you can just see what everyone's up to you don't have to go to a Uh, high school reunion it's made it uh they're obsolete i feel like yeah feel like so um i thought that was super interesting like you know yeah because people don't want to really come and see you face to face they rather just stalk you on social media especially if they've changed you know like on skinnier fatter whatever you know i don't know there that's a lot of pressure yeah. But now you can just sit behind your computer and <laughs> cyber stock. Right. And see what everyone's up to, what jobs they have without the pressure of having to actually talk, socialize type shit. But for the record. How do you feel about that? Like, do you, like, you're uh, an extrovert, right? Totally. So you would want to go into that situation and talk to people? Yeah, 100%. Okay, yeah, me too. Yeah. Oh, I was really excited, but I, I was probably not going to go because that. The tickets were seventy five motherfucking dollars for what? Okay, you need to calm down, Smoky Hill. <laughs> for what? This isn't Harvard. Come it was, on now. It's because they were gonna have like an open bar. Bitch, I don't drink. Can mm. you make an option for people that don't drink, please? Yeah, that's why I guess. What a hot mess. Was there like catered? It was like there was food and stuff, or just it was like booze? it was. It was like not. Yeah, it wasn't like catered. It was like. Up. It was like snacking oh. or something. It was like seventy five dollars for snacks. That's crazy. I think the, the majority of the budget went towards um, the venue. Yeah. Or whatever. Because, what a hot ass mess. Anyways, that's my little complaint there. <laughs> oh, how do I check this? Enable sorting. Yeah. Sure. See, and it'll go to the bottom. I think. Okay. Also, thumbs are too big. What else? You do it. What else do we need to talk about? Your phone's not working. Um, in regards to social media, um, I put down body image and plastic surgery. And so you, you said you wanted to talk about that. Yeah, I want to I wanna hear what you have to say first, though. Well, because I feel like that is more specific to women. I mean, yeah, it's like made us like just by looking at Kim, for example, it's made us think that like, I mean, there are just so many unrealistic body image expectations out there because of social media, you know, like so many people get. A lot done. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm not against plastic surgery at all, though. Not against it. Like, if you got the money and that's what you want to spend it on and, like, that's going to make you, I don't know, feel better. Your husband's going to look at you different. and Like you more. I don't know. Like, do it. I don't get why everyone... I think uh, this goes back to what we were talking about that one day is, like... I think people get mad about it because they don't have the money or they can't do it. Yeah, a bunch of jealous hoes ruining everything for everybody. That's the main problem <laughs> with most things going on right now is like a bunch of jealous hoes. So this is, this is my idea on the subject, okay? What's your idea? The problem... So... When you talk about like, oh, we're showing unrealistic, what do you call it? Unrealistic body images? Is that what you call it? Yeah. Body image expectations, I guess. Okay. Unreal expectations or whatever. Yeah. For for specifically women's bodies, because this is more of a issue that affects women, it seems like, than guys. 
Well, to you. <laughs> no, what I think in general. Because, really? yeah, because I think guys' uh, success with finding a partner has less to do with their looks than with women. Mm. Right? Not in this day and age. Uh, I don't know. I feel like I'm seeing more and more guys having work done than yeah, ever before. Yeah, maybe so. And but you, I'm just saying in general. Your views on things, you need to be on social media more before you start talking because, like, you saying, like, it's more women than men. I feel like that line is starting to get blurred these days. Well, I think all the lines are starting to get blurred these days, and I don't think that's a good thing. <sighs> but what I'm trying to get at is... It's not just women. A... a a woman's body, like a beautiful woman's body, is a beautiful thing. What does that mean? What's beautiful? <laughs> to you. <laughs> okay, I got to be careful, I guess, yeah. what I say here. But my He's talking about J-Lo. <laughs> I'm, ta- I'm talking about, listen, not everyone is beautiful. Not everyone is beautiful. It's it's an attribute that some people have and some people don't. And some people have more than others. Okay? okay? Some people are beautiful. That's not something that we all have. That's something that you have. Really? That's not something that I have, for to example. <laughs> just, like, just like intelligence. Some people are super smart. Some people are not super smart. You can't just say, oh, we're all geniuses mm-hmm. because that makes me feel bad if I'm not a genius. Mm-hmm. That doesn't make you a genius because you feel bad about not being a genius. Same thing like it doesn't make you beautiful because you feel bad about not being beautiful. We have to have ideals and an ideal of beauty. Why do we have to? Because that's the way we work, okay? Because we have to have an ideal of what beauty is. And that gives you something to admire. An ideal of beauty gives you something to find uh, something transcendent in. Mm. It connects us to God, I think. And... Instead of admiring that and respecting that, people are jealous hoes. And so they're just jealous of it. And instead of respecting or admiring or appreciating that thing that someone else has, they'll be like, oh, if I don't have it, I want to tear it down. Mm -hmm. It's way easier for me to tear it down than for me to figure out that... Well, with some some certain things, you can't ever get there, and you and it's hard to accept that. So you rather tear it down, out of jealousy, right? Mm. So that's why I've said for a long time, like I think there's a war on beauty, mm. because people are just jealous and they can't accept that. And instead of seeing an ideal as something to connect us to the divine, they see it as something that highlights their own insecurities, and so it makes them upset. Well, I think this goes into like you know life. Like, I always thought life was supposed to be fair. <laughs> and I get really upset when I realize life isn't fair. And Austin's always telling me, like, life isn't fair. It's yeah, not nothing supposed about to life be. is fair. But th- this is the point I wanted to make with that, is that I think it's the, the negative reaction to those uh, <laughs> ideals of beauty mm-hmm. comes from our disconnection from spirituality. Yeah. Because what makes you valuable Mm -hmm. is not your beauty Mm -hmm. or your intelligence or any other character traits that you possess or don't possess. Right. You are valuable as a human being because you have a soul and you're created in God's image. And all of that is irrespective of any attribute that you have, any position that you are in life, whatever. Human being, the human soul has an equal value and each person is important because of that. Mm -hmm. So that importance and value that you have as a human being, it doesn't come from those other things. And that's the thing. If you remove the soul, if you remove your importance as a human being because of the fact that you're a human being made in God's image, then what do we got to base it on? We could base it on your looks Mm -hmm. or we could base it on your intelligence or how much money that you have. Mm -hmm. But regardless of all those things, you got to find value in humanity nice right yeah 100 percent. and that yeah yep i have nothing left to say to that well this is awkward (laughs) um are you against plastic surgery um i mean 
do I guess you, I mean what does against it mean? Like, should we outlaw it? Like, should there be laws against it? Am I morally against it? What? Morally, like uh, changing God's creation. No, do it. Yeah, do whatever you want. Like, I mean, it's probably very important for you to understand the risks associated with it, which I think most people don't. Yeah, that's huge. That's the. I mean, that's my main concern with it. Is like under do some research and understand the risks and the side effects and all of that stuff. And if you want to do it, go for it. I don't think anyone should stop you or there are judge such you. huge risks i mean i used to be more into plastic surgery maybe five years ago until i researched all the risks yeah and then i was like huh, just kidding it's a lot to risk it's a lot to gamble on it's a lot know? especially the most popular procedure right now i feel like is like the brazilian butt lift and that as far as I know, is like the most dangerous procedure you can, it's like one of the most dangerous, like the most people die from or something. Mm. So that's wild to me. And nobody talks about that. Oh, and also, yeah, I mean, we could, I could just go on and on, but maybe that's something I can talk about more on my channel or something. Okay. Because breast implant illness is real. I mean, just your body rejecting, you know, anything that's not supposed to be there is real. And that goes for birth control, which we shall talk about on another day. Oh, yeah. But that's how I discovered all the negative. That's how I realized that I needed to get my birth control removed. And that's how we became a family of four. (laughs) Even though I got it removed. How long did you get it removed ago? November 2018. We did two good. years almost. Yeah, we did good, Austin. Oh, two years. That's yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> and the night baby Jigga was conceived, I knew it. You I knew, knew it? I done fucked up. Really? <laughs> yes. Cause I I was keeping track on my, you know, my app. Yeah. And I remembered seeing I was ovulating that week and that shouldn't have happened. Mm. <sighs> but we got a little baby jugga. So mm. yeah. Um Moving on. What else do um, you want to talk about? I mean, I got a lot of, um, I had asked you guys on Instagram, my Instagram stories, what topics you wanted us to address. And I got a lot of different random ones. Um, a lot of hijab, but I feel like I already addressed that in the last one. And I'm kind of over that subject, to be honest. So I probably won't talk about it for another while, a little while, because it's just, it gets old. Yeah, you guys, you guys can feel free to ask questions, and we're also going to feel free to ignore your stupid questions. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, that's well, We're going to talk about what we want to talk about. You guys feel free to ask questions, present interesting topics, whatever. But ultimately, like, we're going to do what we think is interesting. But the, the, just the obsession with the hijab... It's a it's a obsession with the identity and the. We already talked about what it. What is it called? Like, yeah, so you don't even want to get into it. Yeah, right? like it's just, but it's really ridiculous, and I'm over it. You guys aren't over it. How are you not over it? People are obsessed with image and nothing else. I know, I'm over it. Anyways, um, so there was a lot of talk about marriage too. So I thought we'd get into that a little bit. Okay. So for those of you that don't know, if you're new here, Asif and I got married. When we were really young, I was 18 and you were, I was 21, right? I think you don't remember. No. Yeah. You were 21. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about that. Like, huh, what was that like for you? Cause I know what it was like for me. And then I have my, you know, vision of what that was like for you. Would you do it over again? Do what, like, what came, you know, like stuff like that. Like, talk to us, Austin. Maybe you need to go first because. Why? Because I never th- think about stuff like that. Like, I never think about retroactively the stuff in my past of if I would have done something different or could I have done something different or what if this happened instead of that happened. Like, really? Yeah, I never really think about that. Because well, it's a it's a waste of time. Like you can't change what happened. You can't change the past. Why would I dwell on it? What well, would you recommend? Why would I that ever spend someone? any energy? 
No. Never reflect on your past. No, not move reflecting. Forward. I said getting only move forward. Oh, this is so annoying. I said, would you, would you recommend getting married at the age of twenty-one to someone, homeboy? Oh, <sighs> I think uh, I don't know. It depends. So go into that. Depends on you well, know. I mean, because I feel like most people who got married at that age are not still together. Facts on facts It seems facts like we facts. were, everyone assumed that we were the least likely to make it, and no one has survived longer than us. Oh, crap. <laughs> like, we're about to hit 10 years. Yes, we are. And I don't think anyone expected that, and I think everyone else, even the people that people expected, didn't make it. Suck us. So I don't know what the secret suck. is. I think we're just better than everybody. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what the secret is. What is the secret? I feel like we were honest with ourselves and our relationship from the beginning. I think everybody was lying to themselves about they had this little perfect little marriage and they were going to just like last forever. And you and I knew that it was going to be up and down and more down than up and then up and down, you know? Okay. I feel like That's we were always theory. honest about it. And yeah. also, I think it plays a huge role that both of our parents have been married forever. Mm-hmm. That plays a huge role. I mean, that really established a goal for me. Like, and I think getting just divorced affects, was never an option. Right, yeah. It just affects the way you conceptualize marriage. I was going to die like before I got divorced. That, if it's something that you can just do, like, oh, yeah, that's normal. Just when you had enough, you just walk away. Mm-hmm. And if you see in a lot of those situations, like your old friends that got married and divorced or whatever. Uh-huh. Like, their parents got divorced. Yep. And the the other parents got divorced. Yep. You know, like, I think that plays a role, too. But I really believe it's because we were honest from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what I believe. I don't even what, what do you probably mean? need to say it. No, you do. Oh, yeah. I think it's because love conquers all. <laughs> I, I'm actually working on writing out a whole, like, philosophical treatise that is based upon this. But you just started practicing it within sir, the universe. Sir. Yeah, I know. But I'm Sir just started practicing love conquers I'm, also. I'm just I don't even understand it yet. I'm still trying to think through it. And that's what I'm saying. I'm writing something. Eventually I'm gonna get to the point where I've like thought it out enough that I can uh you know publish uh publish it somehow. But I'm working on it. Have it, you always it doesn't make full sense to me. I don't understand it fully yet. But, and I'm not ready to articulate what I do understand yet. I'll do it. I will for you privately if okay. you want. Okay, but how, no. No? <laughs> okay, I'll just go fuck myself. <laughs> no, I mean, like, you should do it for all of us. I'm trying to share you with the world. But I'm not ready to share the idea because it's not fleshed out enough, I feel like. Oh, but, so have you always believed that love conquers all type thing? I think I've always been uh, very romantically inclined and romantic really have. type of thinking. I've always had romantic thinking, I think. Yeah. Uh, but actually kind of understanding that is a very different thing. You know? No. Oh, like understanding that love understanding all? the all? that I think that is the truth and understanding why that is the truth. Mm. Interesting. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> Um, I'm a little, we should have a race of who can uh, write a book first. Oh yeah, everyone. Okay, so here's the thing. I want to, I've been wanting. Nara's been talking about writing, writing a, a book, book. But here's the since thing. when? <laughs> like four or five years ago. Yeah, because I have the perfect Where's title. The book? Okay, my book was gonna be a juicy tell all. Are F you gonna y'all. tell them what the title is? No. Okay, good. Definitely not. Y'all like to steal shit. Yeah. <laughs> um. Is that what a memoir is? Like a, a life story? A memoir is like, yeah, life story. That's what my book's going to be. It's going to s- expose everybody. <laughs> but that's okay. why I haven't been able to do it yet. Why? Because... You're not ready to expose people? I am. But you can write it out and have it ready and work no, on editing I and stuff. Ready. And then release it's, it I'm when it's ready time. to expose... Yeah, now you're ready. Now more than yeah. ever. Um, I think just like doing the lives over time have like... You know, just given, just like worked on tested your, the waters a little yeah, bit. Yeah, worked on your storytelling abilities oh, and all that. Yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm so into like the book idea. 
Because I think I feel like I could go into more depth. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, I think it would be good. My mom, I don't think, wants me writing a book. <sighs> Sorry, mama. <laughs> but you made me this way. And you're going to love the book. It's going to be a whole lot of truths. Yep. Um, so, yeah. Um, another bullet point was uh, the different... Everyone's always asking us this. Like, was it hard marrying into... Because Asif's half Afghan. So my dad's from Afghanistan. My mom's American. And, and your dad is Moroccan. Yes. And your mom is half Swiss and half Lebanese. Yeah, sure. So people are always like, oh, is it like a cultural difference? Uh, marrying someone from a different cultural background or whatever. And I don't think it's an issue at all for us. I don't think it's ever been an I issue. Think, uh, I think we are both culturally American. Totally. That's why. But but if you are like, you're, the dude is like culturally Afghan mm-hmm. and the wife is culturally Swiss or something, like, I don't know. You might run into some issues then. Don't get me wrong though. The Afghan blood be peeking out sometimes and so does the Moroccan blood and it just like clashes. Afghan and Moroccan both very volatile, hot-blooded, <laughs> dangerous and so we both have that in us, you know what I mean? And we also... But s- ultimately, yeah. American, culturally. So th- th- it's very compatible. But we, we, we also have people that we know that are full-blooded, you know, volatile, <laughs> blooded. What is... what do you, What's the word? And um, we see how that could uh, potentially... Cause problems? Get wild. <laughs> yeah. But it's fun. It's fun watching them. It's fun watching them stay married, you know. Do you think it's a higher uh, or lower success rate for marriage for people that are from different cultures or no? I think it's a lower rate. You do? (laughs) Yeah. Well, it depends, I think, where you're from. Yeah. Like your mom and your dad. Mm -hmm. You know, like... Or your mom Imagine and your, your dad with a <laughs> full Afghan blooded wife? Afghan what the? That would never work. Yeah, I don't see how it could That possibly. would never work. Or I can't picture my dad with like a Moroccan woman either. Like, Moroccan bitches are crazy. At least the cool ones. If you're not crazy and you're just like calm, like whatever. That didn't apply to you, like whatever. Boring. (laughs) Um. So yeah. Um. What other? I think this should this can go into like maintaining friendships, and um, relationship struggles. Um. Okay, break it down. What are you talking about? So. Let's go into like maintaining family relations. Family relations. Like, I believe <laughs> that, I mean, I just, I'm, I'm so easily cut people off. And Asif's like the complete opposite. He's like, oh, love conquers all. Oh, it's like, you know, type shit. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, I think I'm always asking you, like, why you're always trying with people. Yeah, for sure. You know, specifically family members that I don't see that you should be trying with. Because time and time again, they'd be letting you down. Or do they, be, do they not be letting you down? Or is it not just my like little theory in my head? I feel like. Oh, you don't think they're letting you down? I don't think of it in that way, no. You don't? No. You just think they're not capable of like giving you that full... Blo- I don't know. I don't you- know what you're talking about, I guess. I think I'm talking about your brother specifically. <laughs> oh. Um, yeah, I mean, I think people have their own issues. Mm. And so I can't hold them to my standards. We're not all at the same level. Mm. Like, we don't all have the same standards and abilities. True, but isn't it exhausting to, like... No, because I just don't put that... I don't put that much uh, uh, emotions Mm. on riding on expectations that I would hold for myself. What do you mean? What do you mean? I mean, you got to expect from each person according to their ability. Mm-hmm. So. 
Hmm. You just got to kind of know what people are and who people are. And the, just like how it's important for you to be true to yourself, you got to understand that other people are like, you got to judge them based on who they are. Mm, yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we all have different personalities and we all have different uh, levels of what you can expect from us emotionally and in a relationship and all mm. that. So if you're not, it's the same thing we were talking about with Rita the other day. Rita, you're such a fucking flake. You were supposed to be the first guest, bro. And I keep telling Austin. Flaked out. Twice. <laughs> but yeah, like, yeah, you can, yeah. So like you just, I mean. Sorry, Rita, if you were my friend, you'd be dropped, boo. Yeah, so I'm saying if you just expect <laughs> people to be something that they're not capable of being then you're going to be disappointed and you're going to be emotionally hurt if you just kind of figure really? out what they are and who they are then you can still be friends with them you can still have a relationship with them you just know what to expect i disagree you know what i mean you disagree i disagree because i care too much i feel like i care too much and that's why I let it go. That helps me not care. You know? I can't, like, sit around and babysit a friendship. No, I don't do that either. I feel like... Uh, or, or It's just adjusting your expectations to be realistic. Mm. Maybe I have unrealistic expectations, but I don't see the issue with having unrealistic, unrealistic expectations. Because it doesn't hold people according to who, they, who and what they are. It holds them according to what you want them to be. Mm-hmm. Maybe, yeah, and that's probably, like, my biggest flaw. But that's just the reality of the way that I think. Like, what if I did that with you in our marriage? What if all like of you your... That. No, all of your flaws and whatever, like, t like, personality quirks or whatever that you have, all of your tendencies that I've figured out and discovered over the last 10 years. Uh -huh. What if I just threw all of that out the window and had zero understanding that that's who you are and how you are, and I just, tomorrow, expected you to be a perfect person? I mean, and do or you, el if that's... Or else get out of my life. Okay, if that's what's that important work. to you. No, that doesn't work. I don't see how it doesn't. <laughs> because we wouldn't be married if that's what I did. Oh, okay. And... I don't see the issue is my problem. I don't see the issue with that. You don't see the issue of not being married? No, I see the issue with not being married, but I don't see the issue if that makes you a happier person. Well, it wouldn't make me a happier person, and I don't think it makes you a happier person. That's I, my whole point. I disagree. Well, you're wrong. Because <laughs> I think, or I don't know if it's the older I get or if it's just my hormones, but I've been fed up lately. Yeah, you have. I'm fed up. My I saw a little meme the other day that was like Lizzo holding this little tiny purse that was like an inch by inch big, and some and the meme said like what does she what does she have in there? And someone said my patience. That's me. Okay, me and my little purse with zero patience. I have no more patience for people anymore. Yeah. I used to think because I'm such an extrovert, I used to think I needed all these people around. You know. Yeah, so how do you not? How do you not value relationships with people as much if you... Because there's so many people in the world. Mm. Okay. I'm very um, optimistic. Lot. There's a lot of people in the world. And I can make friends anywhere. And I can get, you know, moving on to the next. <laughs> I believe in loyalty. Oh, that, this, that goes into like one of... The questions here was like, what's the most important part of a relationship, you think? Okay. And I think it's loyalty, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, sir. All right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think if you don't have loyalty to what do you, me. What does loyalty mean? And I think that's why it's really important to my dad, too. What does loyalty mean? Um, it means like you're... you're you're willing to have that person's back. You are willing to... You're not talking about, like, uh, faithful. What do you mean, faithful? Like, not cheating on someone? Is that is, I mean, that's obviously, not what you mean when you say loyal? No, not You're necessarily. You're talking about, like, emotionally? Emotionally, have someone's back, be able to move on from small shit, you know? Like, my problem with one of my siblings right now is I feel like she just... she's. 
she just was willing to throw everything away for the stupidest reason, you know? And, like, you're willing to forgive all these other people, but you couldn't give that to me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I feel like that's a loyalty issue. Okay. Right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like in our relationship, what's pissed me off all these years was I felt like you were disloyal. And Asif always, yeah, he. But that's the he thing. Attaches, when you say that, it yeah. sounds like I cheated on you. No, a bunch of he times. attaches that with that. No, I'm never meaning that. I mean emotionally. I don't even think I would be as. I don't even know. You know what I mean? So explain to me what it is then. Yeah, I feel like you need to be there for that person. You need to for, not forgive, but like put up with shit. And you don't feel like I do that? I feel like you weren't there for me until recently. Better late than never. I disagree, but okay. You disagree? Yeah, I think... You'd rather never? No, but not better late. There's such thing as like almost too late. Yeah, for sure. Um, But yeah. What's the most important part, do you think, for you in a relationship? Hmm. I've never thought about it, I guess. Well, sit on it. Get back to us. Let me know what you think. I guess it depends on what kind of relationship you're talking about. Our relationship, maybe? A marriage? The most important thing in a marriage. Yes. I mean, everyone would say communication. Just kidding. I don't. I, really I get that don't. it's important, but like, um, I feel like we lasted this long without communication. <laughs> it wasn't like the best, but like we still lasted. You know what I'm saying? So like, mm, it's not like the most important thing. I mean, it would have. Uh, it would have. Um, well, I think that's despite, not because of. Like. What do you mean? Like I think we just lasted to this point by some kind of miracle. I thought it was because love conquers all. Well, it? maybe love is a miracle. Oh my god! You didn't hear. You didn't see that, huh? You didn't put that together. I mean, I think we could have seen you say, "You of all people, will come out with that one." <laughs> You're quick with it. So yeah, I don't know what's the most important thing in a relationship. To you, I don't know. Mm. Okay, well, well, you know, we'll talk about. Yeah, I gotta think back about to it. that another day. Um. A lot of these topics that we have are like really can go in. Can go One of in. them was, um, well, I think we should talk about this one. Which one? Can you have friends of the opposite sex? I totally believe you can. I have friends that are guys. Okay, oh, Asif yeah, wants to be in, in denial. No, I don't believe sir. in that. You cannot be friends with people from the opposite sex. Asif, sir, is in denial. You can't. Asif's friends with girls. He just is in denial himself. No, too. okay. To, okay, so you got to define what a friend is first. So to me, because you work with someone and you're friendly with them, that's not the same thing as being a friend. Asif, you go and hang out. Friend? With okay, no. Friend is someone that outside of work or school or wherever you see them, you talk to them. You talk to them on a regular basis. You have, like, some kind of knowledge of each other's lives and interest in each other's lives. Not just... Uh, you cannot talk to... I have friends I don't talk to on a regular basis. I still consider them friends. I don't consider that a friend. Well, to you. <laughs> I mean, that's like an acquaintance. No. A friend is something more than just that someone that you know that you're friendly with. That's what acquaintance That's, is. That's what the people are that you're... It's fun when you see them, but then you don't see them for a whole year and yeah. you didn't talk the whole time. No, but you then do. it's good to see them you again. You can talk over That's social not, media. You can like, you know, like their posts, you know. Okay, that's different. Comment. Yeah, no, I'm talking about like you don't really talk or anything. Yeah, and I believe you can have friends that are the opposite sex. Yes. I do not. I do not. You're in denial. No, because I think like if you're a girl... Any dude that you think is your friend wants to hit. Okay. And if you opened it up and gave them a shot and gave them a chance, there's there's not dudes that are gonna be just that you think are just friends. If you tried to make it more than friends, like there's not dudes that are gonna be like, no, I'm, I'm, we're just friends. 
I, I don't want that. Asif, I Every think dude is waiting for that opportunity. Not with, necessarily. And even if it's just like friends with benefits, they're at least looking for friends with benefits. Oh my God. If you give them the option. Every dude. That's just how we work. That's how guys are. Why are you always doing this? You're generalizing all guys just because you think that way. That's because I'm a guy and I know how guys think. No, you and don't. that's the way Sir, that we operate. Just because that doesn't mean there's no one that's not like that. Okay. Obviously, well, there's going to be a few guys. My guy that friends are really, don't think like that. Well, there are some betas then. <laughs> oh, who's coming for us? If? <laughs> <laughs> That's, like, that's, no. Yeah. That's no, what I think. sir. No, either, sir. I, just like any guy would either jump at the opportunity if presented with it or is a beta. And Asif's an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so, but that doesn't mean I'm not right. No, you're wrong, sir. Sir, you are wrong. <laughs> Anyways, moving on, because we gonna agree to disagree on this one. Yeah, that's fine. Um, red flags in a relationship. That should be a red flag. Your husband doesn't want you to have guy friends because he thinks... That is not allowed. They're all <laughs> betas. <laughs> I can't believe you said that. <laughs> that, was, that was a little... Anyways, yeah, re- red flags. Uh, so what I is think the, what red, is the red flag that you saw in me? What is red flag, Asif? Red, I think red flags all have to do with understanding psychology. Okay, yeah. Well, guess what? I don't get psychology, so I could not like you know dissect the red flag. You didn't see anything coming. No, sir. Until it was too late. <laughs> no, sir. Oops. Hey, calm down. I'm beta, Asif. No, you're a female. I still think it's funny. But you cannot be a beta male if you're female. What's a beta female? I don't know. But I'm definitely the alpha bitch, okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, yeah, so red flags for relationships, I think, just has to do with understanding psychology and being able to... Uh, kind of read people and their psychological makeup. Okay. So the most important thing for you to do is to study psychology and learn about psychology. And that will help you as a person yourself understand who you are and why you act the way you do. And it will help you understand everyone around you, who they are and why they act the way they do, including potential partners. So that is an important thing. Um, and sp- Specifically, I think the key thing is to get some kind of understanding of their relationship with their parents. And it is for that reason, along with a couple other things, that I think, you know, at least like in in traditional relationships, when you're trying to get married, like the parents basically want to interview the potential spouse of their child. I don't think they do that. For psychological reasons, ninety percent of the time. Okay, it's but, just check your bank account. Okay, credit score type shit. <laughs> but my whole thing is instead of the parents interviewing the potential spouse for uh, paycheck, uh, you know, requirements or whatever, it should be the exact opposite. It should be the potential spouse interviewing the family of the partner for psychological issues. That's what you need to do if you're serious about a relationship and you don't want to live in misery. You need to interview the parents of your potential spouse and you need to interrogate the relationship between the parents and your spouse. Are you going to come out with the how to detect book? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) How to figure out if your wife is going to be a psychopath for dummies. But that should be like a, what is the, what are those courses you take online that everybody sells and they're bullshit? Masterclass? Not masterclass. There's something else. They're like online. They're called something else. I don't know. I know masterclass. No. It's like an online course. Tutorial? No. I'll get back to that. But 
<laughs> since you have to, since you have all the answers, you should come out with a step by step course on okay. how to choose your spouse. Yeah, that's a good idea. I could Although, do that. Although I think that's bullshit. Why do you think that's bullshit? Because what? So, I I I just really think that everyone is fucked up in some way or another. Yeah, but but nobody's perfect. Aside from that, what I'm talking about is. Um, yep. aside from just personal issues, listen, like as I think one of the biggest things that people fight about in a marriage is what each of them expect from the other okay. as far as their role mm-hmm. in their life and their um, really? responsibilities and stuff. Uh, Especially nowadays, it seems like girls don't know how to cook. Girls don't do all those like traditional gender role women type of things and a lot of guys that's what they're looking for in a wife they'll run around with a girlfriend that's just like a fun like you know side piece yeah but for to actually settle down and marry they want someone what they're looking for is someone that will be a good mother to their children not someone that's fun to go out with on the weekends and so you need to you need to know how to cook you do that's an important thing but my point is for to know what how your potential spouse is going to take those roles and how they're going to interact and what their conceptions for all of that is is for the most part very reliant on what their parents are like because that's basically how we model our conception of what the roles are based on like wh- what role did my dad play and what role did my mom play and then that's my idea of what a wife and a husband roles should be so most guys have this idea of like what a wife should be and if that's not how the mother-in-law set up the 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 family dynamics Mm -hmm. that's not what you should expect from the girl you think you're gonna marry and i should yeah well i mean that works both ways for sure it it 100 percent works both ways. because if i no i wouldn't have married you either sir based on your parental roles. I don't like to be submissive AF, sir. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. That's so why I don't agree with that. Well, this is obviously like, like a more um, intellectualized, like conceptualized approach to it that I think is going to work more for older people that are trying to get married. Like not hmm. like when you're young and getting married, like n- n- fucking nothing matters. Like you're just in love and you just want to get married and you're too uh, naive to know any better. I think that's when it, it's best to do it. <laughs> uh, yeah. I Cause think it just gets too complicated. The older you get, I, I agree. You just get too nitpicky. You gotta be, you gotta be dumb to get married. Amen. You gotta be dumb for it to work out in the long run. I don't know, and, right? And that naive, that naive, what is that word? Naivete? Naivety? Na- Naivety? Na- nati- nativity? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that... Little statues? Naivety? No. That comes with naive. like uh, being young and in love. I think that's uh, a, uh, a cheat code. Uh, to a powerfully connected relationship. Because if you're older, if you're 30 or 35 and you're trying to get married, like you already know too much about the world and how people are to ever like get pat, like to ever get to a point where it makes sense. Like it's a smart thing to do to like pick this person to spend the rest of your life with. Cause you'll ju- you'll figure things out and be like, oh no, that would be fucking retarded to do that. Mm-hmm. Why would I chain myself to that? Mm-hmm. But that's uh, that's the point. Also, um, wait, I just lost my track of thought. Uh, you were talking about being young. No, what was the last thing you were saying? I was saying when you're older, you know too much to ever think that it's a good idea. Oh, yeah. Oh, I wanted to touch on this. Like, I think I see that, uh, a lot of my friends that aren't married and that are always trying to get married, I see, um, a lot of them mess up in the department that, they really ex- ex- always expect the guy to chase after them. And I totally disagree with they that. They should. I think they should. But the, to the, an extent. I feel like one of the main problems with society right now is... No, because if they should... Even that... Even even there's at, a crisis of masculinity. Okay. 
we're not getting men are not being men and men being men mm. and men being alpha men yes you're a hunter you go you gotta go <laughs> hunt down and attack some prey and you gotta pursue a woman that you're interested in not like be shy and wait for her to approach now you. now those like, are some betas yeah that's beta male <laughs> behavior when you're waiting you're too scared and shy and you wait for her to approach you for something to happen but no I- you gotta go make shit happen you sir, gotta go get it. Excuse me, sir. And wi- that's what I'm saying. That those women that have that uh, idea that that's what should happen. That's because that's the the thing that's genetically programmed into us on both sides, men and women. For the record, sir and I would not be together if I didn't chase after him. So who's the beta now? Well, yeah. Well, see, the thing is, these these you know little talks we're having they don't always work okay <laughs> just remember that well it depends on how interested uh you are like what do you mean if the girl is super interested in a dude it's annoying and the dude is not that interested in her oh i'm sorry so tell us how you really feel uh, well i'm you saying weren't? in that situation you weren't? i'm saying in that situation if the guy is not gonna pursue the girl but the girl wants to be with the guy I uh, I think. You think what? I think that can happen. So what went wrong in our little beta relationship, sir? What What do you mean? What went wrong? I mean, I chased after you, and everything you're saying is like, yeah, man up. So we're you were not a man. Yeah, I you was were like a 16. beta, sir. No, you weren't. I was not coming after you. <laughs> you're robbing the crib. Or <laughs> what do they call that? <laughs> That would be robbing... If you were younger than me, that would be robbing the cradle, (laughs) sir. Okay, so how old was I? When I started pursuing you? Yeah. I was like 15, I think. And I was 18, that means? And you were down. That was when you were... What do you mean I was down? I don't know. Like, you were just acting too cool, okay? I was down? What does that mean? Like, you were... I thought that's when um, you were okay with it. Because your dad was like, yeah, you went on that walk with me. I don't understand what point you're trying to make. My point is, your point doesn't make sense because that means you're beta because I chased after you. I think it's important for women to go after what they want too. Mm. I think there's too much of that. Of what that, if that like sets up uh, an I mean, unhealthy dynamic in a relationship? Though. I don't think it should be like, I think obviously there should be 50-50 or maybe a little. I mean, you need to catch them you know, and then you can play hard to get, but I think there's nothing wrong. I think there's too many girls these days that like are just expecting the hunter when you should, well, you I should think pursue. the problem is not that. I think that there's not enough men who are hunters. Okay. Well, but you, you weren't a hunter, sir. For sure. My, my, my. <laughs> what do you got to say now? I was a little beta non-hunter. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was too young. I, I but I think that applies. Like, let's say I wasn't married now. I see all these girls. Like, okay, I tried to set up one of my. I'm thinking about a sp- specific couple okay. in my yeah. head. Uh-huh. Literally perfect for each other on paper and everything. Like, I've hung out with both of them equally. Like, they would have made the perfect couple. Yeah. The reason, the literal reason it didn't work out is because she wanted to be chased more. Yeah. And he, I feel like. So is there something have, wrong with that? Yeah. Cause I feel That's like. That's like just playing too hard her rela- to get. I feel like all her relationships are always playing too hard to get. Uh huh. And I see that happening so much. Like you need to go after what you want. So is she not. Once you hook is she them. Not, well, is she not pretty enough to get them to no, pursue her? No, she is, but the these guys that she's going after are really well off. You know, they have, they don't have time like that to come be chasing you either. Uh, you know well, what I mean? Well, see, it's the romantic in me that would like uh, say, yeah, that the right guy is going to do that. Not necessarily. Maybe he's too busy. Yeah, maybe not know, necessarily, but I'm just saying like, in my romantic mind, that's how, that's how I picture it. That's, that's what I would expect too. But, I'm just saying but the girls question is, should... does that make you end up being single until you're 45? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then you really got to settle at that point because... Don't be settling. Go after what you want. That's what I did. I went after what I wanted. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean... Even if they're low-key beta in the beginning. 
Well, it depends on... I think that depends on age. Like, if, if some dude is beta at 40, he's not... I don't think he's not going to get there. Obviously, you know what I mean? yeah. But I think a lot of women... I don't know. I think a lot of women go for guys like that because they know they could be in charge. Am I in charge? No. Asif, you're contradicting yourself, sir. Why? Because... Oh, are you talking about 40-year-old men? Yeah. 40, 40-year-old betas? Yeah. Oh. Well, then, I guess... I mean, I still believe go after what you want. You can, like I said, hook them, and then you can back off a little bit. But you don't just expect them to chase after you. Like, too many... I don't know if this is an Arab girl culture thing, or what. I see it more prevalent, I think, in Arab households Mm. they just really expect that guy to come chasing yeah good luck you will not get what you what what the issue is like when you get to like when you've been doing that and now you're 35 and still waiting like you got to have some sense of urgency the girls who i'm talking about i think are like yeah 30 you got to be panicking by 30 right like they're are they panicking yeah, or they're they still be, thinking like they're not they gotta going play after cool. what they want. Sir. But are they, are they panicking about I, they it? They should be if they're not. Yeah, they should be. Especially if they, with that mentality, like they're going to come chasing you. I was saying, are they panicking? I feel like they should be because they still have that same mentality that they're going to Prince Charming is just going to like be chasing after them. Especially if it, all with all their expectations, all their all these expectations that they have on paper like i don't know i just think it's too high girls and i think everybody's getting their expectations from what they see on social media yeah if you're if you're over if you're a girl and you're single and you're over 35 okay here we go it is time to settle get ready to be triggered (laughs) you you need to settle immediately yeah, you got to. Right? Time's running out. For what? Kids or what? What like what time time's running out for what? It to not be single the rest of your life. Really? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about that. I just don't know. Asif feels very strongly about his opinion when it comes to that, but I feel like I can't speak and on to it because I don't kids? know. Yeah, for sure. What if you don't want to have kids? Uh, There's a lot well, of people maybe. that don't want to have kids. Which is totally fine. Totally fine. A lot of people shouldn't be having Debatable. Kids. Oh, yeah. I was asking. Debatable. This goes back to what I was asking Asif. Like, why? Why is everyone so obsessed with. Like, why did I get so much engagement on my pregnancy post? Like, why y'all so obsessed with kids? And Asif was saying, because. Because I just, I just don't understand. I think that's the, from a biological standpoint, that's the point of life. And so it needs to be the most powerful uh, driver on our behavior and uh, what we think of it as important and compelling. And that is to continue our genetic line into the future. Um, so I think for, for that reason, that's a very important thing to everyone do you get like that when you see your friends make a pregnancy announcement do i get like that what like super excited uh i am very happy for them more than like pretty much anything else that they could possibly announce oh i guess okay that makes sense. like that's more significant to your life than anything else that you can announce i have a new business i Mm -hmm. want employee of the month i got a new car like whatever whatever other kind of announcement that you can make that's by far the most impactful and best one okay uh that someone can make so i would be more happy for that than any other announcement they could make you got a point right yeah i guess so because and I th- I think because that is the primary biological driver for life is to propagate itself, uh, that it feels the most fulfilling of anything that you could do, and that's I think a real problem with the whole generations and culture of not wanting to have kids. It no matter what you think that you're gonna do with your life that you couldn't be able to do if you had kids, 
it's not going to feel worth it at the most deep, uh, primal, genetic level of you. Like, there's nothing that's going to be as fulfilling as you having children. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I kind of, I mean, I agree to that, yes. But I don't like to agree to that because I came from a mentality that I didn't want kids Tell me why. I mean, I just, I grew up in a big family. I just was like over it. (laughs) Why? I don't know. Maybe for selfish reasons. Like you feel like because of that, you don't get enough attention for yourself. That or I didn't, or I, I just, I don't know. When I was a teenager, I was just like, kids, gross. But having a kid completely changed my mindset. Like there are some things that I think people that don't have kids will never experience and never tap into mentally. Right. And like certain like levels of compassion, I think you'll never tap into. And I, th- I really I believe that. I think it gives you a more real and grounded purpose for your life that you can never have otherwise. Hmm. And I, the, another big reason I think I didn't want kids is because I didn't want that responsibility. <laughs> I was afraid of adulting. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people are afraid of adulting. And I mean, rightfully so. That shit is scary. Yeah, it's and, supposed to be scary. And what's even scarier is after you have the kid and you realize... that Because before you have kids, you don't even realize of what that means. Like right. that level of adulting that needs to happen. Right. Until after you have kids and like the, the level of worry is like enough to kill me. I feel like out of stress. I can't relate. I, and that's why I've always been hesitant to have more that. And I was really wanting a boy and I just really felt it. You didn't like, think I could do it? I, I didn't. Okay. First of all, I didn't realize. You doubted my abilities. I didn't. If I. I didn't realize it was the guy who determines the sex of the. Like, Meanie Man were just talking about it today. Uh huh. She's like, I really believe that I can either only have boys or only have girls. Iman said that? Yeah. So neither one of you guys learned at Smoky Hill how genetics work? No, sir. (laughs) (laughs) When when were we going to learn how genetics work, sir? Did you learn that at TJ? Uh, no, you didn't, maybe sir. Maybe not at... No, yeah, I did. Liar. For sure I did. Cherry Creek Public Schools, Trump. Denver Public Schools. Apparently not. <laughs> well, maybe everywhere else except for Smoky Hill. Anyways, I think it's a very common... Because who else? I wasn't just Iman. It was someone else that I just talked to recently, and they told me, yeah, I just, not too long ago, learned that, like... Didn't you, l- didn't you learn about, like, uh, who was that? King Henry VIII or some shit? Who? Like, I'm sorry, who? I think it was King Henry VIII. I might be completely wrong. One of those old kings of uh, England, like, uh, killed, like, six of his wives because no one would, none of them would uh, bear him a son. Yeah, the and women it was are his always... fault the whole time. Okay, that's why I think that's why I think But that was the irony of us and the horror women, of that story is he was blaming all the wives and keep beheading all of them when they wouldn't give him a son and it was his like genetic contribution that was preventing it. See, and if I knew that it was the guy in the back of my head, I feel like I wouldn't be as worried cuz you got a lot of boys in your family. Yeah. Like Maha and Layla are the only Yeah. Shishars. Oh, yeah. Sophia. Yeah. Maha, Layla, Sophia. Yeah. Only shit ours and that side. So, good job, Austin. You're welcome. But I really would have not waited as long had I... I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it's amazing how, you know, timing works. But, like, I do regret waiting as long. It's a really big gap so once really, you think about once it. Once Austin said... Because Layla's like, how old is he going to be when I'm in college? And I was like, I don't know. And also was like second grade, and I was like, <gasps> "What?" Yeah, that's a I big really gap. thought they were like five years apart, maybe. Yeah, you thought they would I be at the same be school. Same together. school. Yeah, that's I, always what I thought in my head too. You know, I didn't realize it until she asked me that. I had also, a panic attack. 
Yeah, that's a big gap. And I was like, Osniff? Like, I was really, I really kind of want to be done after this. But I... Oh, with kids? Yeah. But? But you remember I was telling you, like, <laughs> if it were, I don't know. Oh, you might be down for another one? Just for the sake of baby Jugga having something a little closer? Like, uh, you know, I just were so sad for Layla. Ten yeah. years? Yeah. Nine. But basically ten. Yeah. That's a lot of time. It's really sad. So what? Second grade? Are one of your siblings ten years from you? Sophia's... N- yeah, Mohammed. How, he's exactly ten years? No. What? Sophia's nine. Oh. So Mohammed's And I just more can't relate at all. Yeah, so that's going to be the difference. And that scares the shit out of me for Layla. Yeah. But look at me and Muhammad. Like, it's different. Yeah, so maybe it's more just about the person. It's about the person. Yeah. But I still freak out when I hear that age gap. Yeah. You got any other subjects you want to hit before we get so out of many, here? I have so many, but I feel like we've but been like on here on for... on this episode? Oh, on this we episode. We can always talk about things next time. Um, I think we should talk about how our anniversary is cursed. Uh, Sir. Okay. Our anniversary is cursed. Sir. This one is about to be number 10 this fall. And in... So, nine out of nine times that we've had an anniversary, we have not had a good time. Literally once. It has not been a good time once. <laughs> every single time we are it fighting. It starts out fine, maybe. We're fighting every single time. And not just a regular fight. Like the worst fight of the year <laughs> is going to be on the anniversary. I think last year we even specifically we, like, counted count. on that and expected it. And, and it, then it ended up, it started off actually pretty good. And we're like, oh, it's going to be a good one. And then like. You couple, fucked up. I fucked up? Excuse me. Most of the time. To me, you fucked up. To you. That's not what happened. I don't even remember specifically what happened. I don't either. That's why. Because it just happens every year. So it's just like, mm, you know. Yeah. (laughs) And I remember a lot. Okay. Yeah. But there's some kind of curse that we get. Maybe it was just the first nine years were a curse. Maybe we could break the curse this year. I don't know. These hormones, you know. Oh, uh, yeah, it's going to be extra dangerous. You're right. So we were, we've always talked about like making our own, in, like changing the date. Oh, uh, yeah, we should do that. We have to, we, that's what I thought we did last year. No. We, I thought we did that last year. I don't remember that. I thought we did that last year. I don't remember that. Regardless. So maybe we're changing the date. Okay, yeah, let's change the date. So we gotta what change do the you date. want our new anniversary to so be? So our old anniversary, our cursed anniversary is September 25th. What is our new one going to be? I don't know. Suggest down below. What's a good date? <laughs> we should pick something in the spring. Yeah, I like that idea. We could have, uh, that way you're not going to be pregnant. Mm-hmm. You, wait, but you're super hormonal right after you give birth too, right? Yeah, like I think, for a while. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be dangerous still. <laughs> we should just put our anniversary on hold <laughs> for like a year. Amen. <laughs> Let's just put it on hold. So if your anniversary is cursed like ours, shout outs to you. Yeah. Hope that made you feel better. Yeah. What do you think? If we, if we didn't cancel our anniversary, what is, do you think things are going to be back to open by oh, this fall? No. Like if we wanted to like go somewhere. Oh, no. Everything's going to still be locked down for wave two? Yeah. Lame. By the way, I'm forever looking for a cute face mask. I buy a cute one. That shit don't fit. I have to give it to Asif. He doesn't even wear it. So let me know. That sounds like something for Alibaba. I bought the cute one off Alibaba and it don't fit. Oh. It's too small. It covers the mouth. It doesn't cover the nose. It's a hot mess. It's super cute though. But yeah, moving on. Um, we're going to end it now, I think, because, you know, it's been a while. Yeah. I did want to tell, we wanted to tell you guys about how you can send in a voice message. Right. So for the podcast, aside from commenting on YouTube. YouTube. Um, you can actually send us a, uh, audio message. And it can be 
like a comment or it could be a topic you want us to discuss. And Asif wants to be an asshole and be like, we only discuss comments and, and topics that we feel like it. Yeah, for That's sure. Very but if you very discouraging, have some... by the way. Okay, well, there's a little bit of pressure for you guys to be interesting. Oh, my God. That never hurt anybody, pressure to be interesting. <laughs> that only improved people. Anyways. So, you can send us audio messages. I'm going to put the link below. It's um, it's if you just pull up our page on Anchor, which is an app, but you don't have to have the app to do it. You could just pull up the website of Anchor, go to our show page, and right underneath it, on the bottom, it says, like, send message or something. So you can send a voice memo. So you can send us a, you know. And it's anonymous. And and we can add it into the podcast. Yeah. If you like. So I thought that was really cool. Yeah. And, yeah, Apple still can choke because. Um, Apple is so much more difficult. Can someone make it make sense? Like Apple, getting your podcast on Apple is so much harder and more complicated than getting it on Spotify or anywhere else. Because Spotify is inferior. Oh, oh. Spotify is inferior? No, I mean like superior. Sorry. Sorry, superior. And I've always thought that. And that's why you don't have an Apple Music. I used to have anymore. Apple Music, yeah. And I and I was like, no, Spotify's better. And he's like, no, it's not. And then he switched. I was super resistant and she kept telling me to switch over and I didn't want to switch over and then i actually ended up switching over when uh i'm sorry who's when right? joe budden went over to spotify sir who's right that's when i uh joe budden was right awesome. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> anyways um don't forget to follow us on our instagram account the nura designs and if you guys don't it's know... It's the Nur's Eyes on all social. Follow it, like it, subscribe it, tell your friends about me. Asif's trying to find a second wife. No, it's a quote from Chris Rock from Rush Hour. Tell your friends about me. Really? Yeah. Okay. After he beats up Why did you change your voice like that? Like, he sounds like that. I don't know. Isn't that <laughs> what he sounds like? <laughs> no. <laughs> um... But yeah, follow us on our socials. Um, we're going to be starting a Patreon account where we post exclusive content. Maybe I'll have a couple of juicy story times. We'll, we'll put up Woo! exclusive stuff and then we'll probably drop the episodes a day or two earlier on Patreon than the other platforms. Um, so and that maybe way you can just extended go... episodes or something. We just, yeah. We've got to figure out the logistics of that. We'll put all kinds of good stuff on there so you guys could give us your money. <laughs> and... Asif wants to take your money, honey. We need your money. <laughs> um, but yeah, for don't forget, for the voice memo, the link would be down below. Also, we uh, send us ideas for merch ideas. We have a couple things in the work. Works? In the works? I was going to say, you just want a singular? Uh, no, we have a couple things in the works that I'm working on right now. But send in merch ideas. Yeah, stuff that you would actually want to see. Because if you don't want it, then I don't want it. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Oh, All well, right. Thank you Are so much done? for We're listening, out. tuning in, and watching, and for your support. And, you know, just engaging in the comments. Even though I'd be getting bitter about some of them, the sometimes. comments have been good and fun. I think on all of all the videos, we should so start far. doing shout outs. We're gonna start doing shout outs next one. We we'll start, will start doing shouting shout people out for engagement. Oh uh, yeah, and there was specifically someone that like left a bunch of comments and and us, they're really and, long essays. And, and Asif loves you, okay, girl. i and I specifically wanted to talk about a subject that she brought up, and I did mm. forgot to. So I'll do it on the next podcast. And shout out to you. Mm -hmm. And, and shout out to the stupid girls that don't listen to the podcast, get emotional and start quoting shit that didn't fucking make sense. That's fine. Uh, feel free. You look stupid. No, that's fine. Feel yeah. free. Feel free to look dumb. The next podcast is dedicated to the haters. See you guys next week. <laughs> Goodbye.